Death Watch. Welcome back to Cradle of the World, the Dungeons and Dragons 3.5 slash Pathfinder First Edition campaign by Death Watch Productions. We will rejoin our heroes in the midst of a battle now at the end of last session. Um, we, Casimir, had finished his task of taking that giant golden ball to the pedestal and then walked through the mirror and found a table upon which, at which were seated multiple of the lesser elven deities. And uh, while he was doing that, his companions were in a battle in the hall outside that room with some automatons and humans, a uh, group of these invaders. And that's where we had stopped the session um, with Rohan, Graham, and Fenrith Still in that fight, Graham was affected by a spell which caused him to want Fenrith's breastplate with all of his heart, and so that's what he's attempting to do. And uh, he had cast Obscuring Mist uh, on his last turn and is trying to get that breastplate from Fenrith. And then Casimir, he had drank from this bowl on the table, and it reminded him of the strongest moonshine he'd ever tasted, made by Graham's father. And when he woke up, he got the sensation of cold and um, some light and the sound of blowing wind, but then he passed out again. And we ended on um, uh, after Graham's turn. And so we'll pick up right back there. But first, let's introduce our heroes, starting with Chris. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm playing Casimir, Hero of the Rock. And I'm uh, sleeping on the job again, apparently. <laughs> I'm Travis. I'm playing Graham, Hero of the Sea. And I'm trying to make this cleric see reason. But like the saying goes, you can lead a cleric to water, but you can't make him take off his breastplate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Justin. I'm playing Rohan, Hero of the Sky. And uh, while I'm relieved that the Enforcer thing is dead i am now on a vendetta to kill the ranger that i saw that may or may not have been the one that shot me earlier i'm john playing fenrith hero of the fire or the flame uh i am now seeing reason because after he told me why he needed the breastplate the whole thing started or whole place started to shake <laughs> yes that's correct the um the ground and the complex you're in had begun to shake at the end of the session. And uh, so now we'll, um, we'll get started from there. So now there's this obscuring mist which prevents any of you from seeing what these uh, enemies you were fighting are doing. And because of the shaking and the rattling, um, you're not able to really hear anything they're doing either. Um, uh, but now well, that'll bring us back to Rohan. So uh. the ground's shaking and there's this uh, this mist filling up that hallway. But your turn. Yeah, I'm kind of cursing Graham for uh, getting in between me and, and uh, my quarry. So I'm going to go charging into the mist, trying to get to the other side of it, see if I can still catch that ranger or mage that we had been fighting. All right. So, yeah, just that full 60 feet is all I can do. Okay, so you go tearing down the hallway to the stairs there, and uh, now in, you can hear the sounds of people moving around and things like that, but not able to see anybody. Okay. Um and then uh, Casimir. So, um, finally your eyes, you know, they flutter open again. And you see yourself, you sort of sit up and you see that you're in this uh, cave. Is the best way to describe it. Um, All right. And in the one direction, you can see light um, from the sky out there. And that's about, you know, probably two or th like 300 feet away 
and that's how long this cave is. Um, but so you sit up and you start looking around and, uh, you're, you're laying right next to a, a large stone, um, coffin, essentially. Um, and that's right at the end of this chamber. So all this cave is, is just a long hollowed out section, um, that ends where this, uh, this uh, coffin is on a pedestal. All right. Uh, do I feel any sort of pull one way or another to or towards the cave entrance or to the coffin? No, you you just um, you do feel an odd sensation, uh, like you're not really completely there. Mm-hmm. Is the best way to describe it. So, like you know, as you're looking around, you notice that you can sort of see through yourself. Hmm. I'll. Uh... I guess I'll stand up and, uh, oh man, what would Graham do? <laughs> uh, I think I'd try to push the, like, uh, open the coffin. Maybe. May, is there any writing on it? Maybe discern who might be in the coffin before I go open it? Yeah. So, um, when you stand up and take a look at this thing, um, it's, it's huge. Uh, okay. For one. But yeah, it does have a lot of, you know, elven script chiseled into it but um but then you see uh the shade of uh tarcellius um mm. and he's standing next to it all right and um or tarcellus sorry he's standing next to it anyway he um he's real faded and um you know you can see through him and everything but and then also when he speaks it sounds like he's coming from far away um and he says that he hasn't the strength to manifest like this anymore, but uh, this is where I rest, and you must, this is where you must come to wake me. Okay. Uh, it will be done, Tarcellus. Okay. It, is it uh, in the waking world, or am I, is it, is he referring to like here and now? He, yeah, like in the waking world. All like right. He's, so, like, this is a, he's showing you a vision of where you got to go. Okay. Then I'll take extra note of, uh, like the the coffin and the cave uh, itself. Maybe I can try to pinpoint it. Yeah. Uh, so you, be. yeah, you could um, you could start moving off down that tunnel towards the light. Okay. And then Fenrith. So you've got this obscuring mist now, so you can't see anything. Graham's gone crazy, but what would you like to do? <laughs> well. As uh, he announced last time that he needed the breastplate to prevent something bad happening, and then the the whole place started shaking. So I imagine this is what he was talking about. So I'm going to call out to him that, uh, that, again, if I had known you were trying to prevent this whole place from coming down, I, I would have given it up. Has come over here and help me with this. Hmm. Is that a bluff? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. And then I'll start trying to fumble my way around in the dark looking for him, or in the mist. Okay. That's my movement pattern. <laughs> and that's where I'll end. Okay. All right, one second. All right, Graham, so you can hear him say that, um, and then you can see him moving around in there, so what would you like to do? Yeah, so I guess I will go ahead and dismiss the obscuring mist then with my what can i do that uh even though it came from ring of spell store and i'm not sure what the limitations on dismissing a spell are uh yeah you can okay well i'm glad you saw a reason fenrith and i'll walk up to him and uh (laughs) you're gonna have to do most of the work though look at my hands (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah, those things. As, uh, that, that does bring up an interesting uh, scenario: is dispelling a spell from a ring of spell storing. If I had cast that spell in there, would I be able to dispel it or dismiss it? No, no. He, the one who uses it, not the one who put it there. As that was really just uh, kind of wondering, but yeah, I and. Uh, uh, now remembering that his hands are these pincers, I will uh, look at him in disgust and say, "I'll I'll get it <laughs> from here." <laughs> no, let me help you. 
Start, <laughs> Stay away from me with those I'll start things. clacking around his breastplate. I don't want you to cut <laughs> the straps. I'll get it. <laughs> but uh, I guess my next turn, I'll, I will start taking it off. It'll be, what, 10 minutes? Is that That's for donning it, right? That, can't you take it off much quicker? Um, I thought it was the taking it off. I could be wrong, though. So I'll have to look it up. <laughs> uh, yeah, that should be it for my action. I suppose with the move action I had left, Brandon, I'll just uh, go through the motions of actually sheathing Blood Tooth, and that'll end it for my turn. Okay. It's one minute to remove any armor. So, uh, for Pathfinder, it says... Yeah, so you're talking about full plate. Yeah. So to to remove it, you're looking at 1d4 plus one minute. Hmm. If you have some yeah. help, you can cut it in half. I don't uh, know if I, I quantify as it. help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to add even more time. I was looking at second edition. So four minutes. Okay. All these dang additions. Okay. So I probably hear this, like, this talk of de-armoring him in the middle of combat. So I'll I'll ask as a free action, <laughs> where are the enemies? <laughs> Just uh, point vaguely in the direction of the doorway. Uh, I think they went that way, but we've, we've got a more serious problem on our hands here. Nothing well, else matters until we handle this, Rohan. I can't see anybody, so all the like pointing doesn't help. Well, he dispelled the obscuring mist, so you should Oh, he did? Able... Yeah. Okay. You might have to dispel the effect on you, the one that's blocking light, John. How do I do that? Um. Oh, I can do it since I put it on you. There we go. Yay. Okay. Yay. I see one. Yeah, I'll point right at the ranger. He's right over there. <laughs> yeah. I think one ran off to the north as well. Or did you kill that one? No, he got away. Okay. Yeah, so Graham, um, he starts, I mean, you move over to him and you're arguing about this. Um, and then you do hear some chanting coming from down that hallway, but you don't see who it's coming from. Although, Graham, you do. Um, so you can right. see that um, mage over there casting a spell. Oh, can I? Mm. I think he's well, behind the pillar, right? No. Because all I see anymore. is the ranger, unless he's okay. further down the hall. Well, never mind then. Let's see, what, what was that on? range? 20, 25, 30, 40. Never mind, you wouldn't be able to see. But you guys can hear some chanting coming from that direction. Rohan, if you help Fenrith, you can cut this time in half. <laughs> I'm more worried about the enemies attacking us while we're... <laughs> While we're taking his armor off. Well, I think this is more important. It's about priorities, Rohan. Then you help him, I'll take the enemies. I can't, and I'll pinch my, my hands, hands <laughs> my hands at him. <laughs> then help me with the enemies. Okay, I'll try to do that, but I, th I think I'll have to uh, constantly get distracted about Fenra taking that breastplate off. All right, so then this spell fires off here. Um, Is it going to give me another mission? Oh, it was on and basically okay. this just uh, horrendous burst of wind um, assaults you, Fenrith, from down the hallway. Um, but you succeeded at your uh, reflex save. And then absorb the rest. How did you yeah, absorb the rest? Temporary hit points from my tentacles. Oh, right. I got you. Okay. So that's his turn. You see that ranger step back out of sight there. Okay. And that brings us to Rohan. All right. So I'll move forward 30 feet. So I'll be right behind Graham. We'll see if I can see anyone from there. Apparently not. So no. I'll keep going another 30 feet. Keeping an eye out for anyone. 
Okay, yeah, you still don't and, see anybody. Yeah, that's my turn. Okay. <clears throat> Casimir, you continue walking down this uh, um, tunnel, basically. And you can see as you look at it that it's like a perfect half circle and the sides are perfectly smooth. Uh, and it's enormous. I mean, the, the ceiling is 50 feet above you. Uh, but everything feels odd to you because you're not really there, but you're also not, you don't have the freedom that, you know, you generally think you'd have if you were like in a astral space or if you were incorporeal or something. I mean, the ground does feel solid under your feet, but your feet don't really feel as solid as they should. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can hear the sound of wind. Um, and it's like, that's the only real sound. It, it's reached that level where it's it's howling into this tunnel and sweeping over you. And so really, that's all you can hear. And then you just see the uh, blue light of the sky up ahead of you. Uh, but she'll be moving down that direction for this full turn. All right. And some of another. So, uh, Fenrith, now it's your turn. So this uh, powerful blast of wind assailed you, but you didn't see where it came from, and it didn't do any damage to you. Uh, but it's your turn. So I will tell Graham that uh, I'm get this off as fast as I can, but that mage is still casting spells at us. You need to take care of that. And as I start to unbuckle the, uh, or unbelt all the uh, buckles on here. Okay. Graham? Yeah, yeah. Good idea. And all. No. No, it seems to you like he's purposely going slow. Right, right. That's, you you gotta let me play it out, Brandon. You gotta let me play it out here. I'm gonna take a few steps away. (laughs) <laughs> but then that's what bothers me, right? I'm going to be like, oh, hey, can't you go any faster? Yeah. Uh, I, th- I think maybe we just need some cover. And I'll lay down on a, a wall of ice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let me draw the the pointer here. So we'll do one like that. Good luck, Rohan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, wall of ice. Um how many feet is that? 60. I think I could do 180. So we'll do it. How how high is the ceiling? It's like 30 feet high. Okay. So I think I can do, I can go 15 feet high and have it go wall to wall across this pillared part of the hallway. Okay. Oh, there we go, Fenrith. Blocks line of sight. Arrows. We should be safe now. I'll continue unbuckling, but like narrow my <laughs> eyes at him. <laughs> Acting awfully weird. Also, what what is gonna happen if we don't get this thing off quick enough? I'm not sure, but I have an intuition it's not gonna be good. Maybe I shouldn't, but I trust you. <laughs> <laughs> this will be the last time anyone trusts me. <laughs> Especially when I get a bunch of. <laughs> leaves or feathers back as a breast. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, this uh, wall of ice springs up behind you, Rohan, um, from wall to wall and uh, obscures your companions from vision. Okay. <clears throat> but uh, you hear the, you hear some chanting again in the hallway in front of you. All right. Do I, <clears throat> Could see. I use that to help me uh, locate a position? Um, well, I yeah, I mean, it, it's, con- a... it's conceivable. Like, you might be able to use that to help you guess the location. Yeah. But anyway, so that I'm just, let's see. Yeah, so there's this casting going on, and... You can feel the spell settle down on you, and you roll the save, and you're successful. Ooh. So that, you know, you feel like this magical energy settling down on you, but then it slips away. Good. And Good. then you um, then you do see this uh, ranger pop back around the corner. Okay. And he takes a shot at you. Well... More than one shot. He takes three shots at you. All right, so we've got a miss. Let's see, what have we got? Two hit. 
Yeah, it looks like four miss and two hit. Why did he shoot so many? Oh, he he shot at both Fenrith and myself. Oh, I got you. So two of the ones that that hit were me. So yeah. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, so let's get the damage here. Uh, bring him back out. Mm-hmm. Accidentally deleted him instead of. Uh, that would explain why he's not there anymore. Yeah. I'll put him here. And he shot at you and he hit you twice, so let's get the damage here. So six and sixteen damage to you. Okay. And now it's your turn. I am going to return fire on him. He's gonna try and shoot me. Alright. Full volley. First one is a many shot, so two arrows on the first shot. I don't know why I didn't show his target. I have him targeted. Yeah. Um, so what did you get? Uh, 32, 20, 18, and 12. The 32 has two arrows. Yeah, on that, it. that's the one that hit. Okay. Okay. All right. And that, um, that drops him. Nice. All right, one enemy down, and a wiggly finger hiding somewhere to go. Yeah, so he drops to the floor dead, and then um, Casimir, you make it to the end of that tunnel on this turn. Okay. And you stare out, um, and you find yourself, uh, obviously, at the really high up on a mountain peak. Um this is like high enough that if you were here uh, for real, the wind would be, you'd be in very real danger of the wind just pulling you right off of the ledge there. But um, as you look out over the expanse below you, you can see some landmarks that are familiar to you. You can see the uh, rock cliffs and then... Um, you can barely make out the uh, the area where the um, where your village is, where Cradle is. Okay. And so, anyway, that helps you uh, uh, place where you're at, like very, very high on the Angry Mountain. And then, um, so yeah, having seen that, uh, you know your your eyes start to get heavy again, and. Uh, All right. Then you lose consciousness. And then, Fenrith, your turn. Now the now the whole place is starting to shake for real, like, violently. Yeah, I'm continue to try and take this off. <laughs> is that, like I said, I know I shouldn't, but I, I trust Graham. <laughs> okay. Um, Graham, so in the back of your mind you know that the place is starting to shake really bad. But, you know, that's not as important. Right. Elements, Fenris, can't you go any faster? <laughs> Going as fast as I can. This things isn't easy to cut, take on, or put on or take off. I do this strap, not that one. <laughs> Give it a snip. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. What should I do? Yeah, that's what I'll do is I'll, is I'll draw blood tooth again and I'll be like, I think we're just going to have to cut the straps. This is going too slow. We're running out of time. I wouldn't recommend doing that. <laughs> Listen, I am telling you, this is the most important thing right now. From one hero to another. <laughs> I feel that if <laughs> I let you cut this, I'm somehow letting you defile my faith. So just <laughs> let me take it off. It's coming. It's coming quick. Uh, let's see here. Okay, I'll give you another another round. Assuming the game master approves the course of action. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just be kind of uh, bobbing back and forth on my feet, you know, clacking mm-hmm. your Keep clacking my I my can't, snippers. I can't yeah. Do it when you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> when you're clacking. And yeah. But that okay. would be it for my turn. Okay. Um. All right, so now the place is continuing to shake. 
very violently. And, uh, and, you know, so like these pillars next to you are, they're like rattling and dust is starting to come down from the ceiling. Some of the f- floor stones are starting to crack apart. So it's like, you know, and all you hear is this rumbling of the uh, earth quaking underneath your feet. Um, and then, um, Rohan, you hear the, uh, a little bit of chanting again, although it's it's hard to pick most of it out because of the earthquake around you. Okay. And a spell comes at you again. So this time you failed your save. Would you like to use a well, hero point? Yes, I would, because I have to try pretty hard to fail those. So, you know, we'll burn one of those. Okay, right. just through a bunch of errors. Uh, anyway, um, all right. So I'll reduce it to six manually, and then yeah, and then just do another reflex. Save. Yeah, much better. Okay, so yeah, then uh, once again you feel that energy dissipate and um, fall away, and then the ceiling begins to collapse and um the area let me do a let's see no, it. so this entire the ceiling collapses in this entire area okay okay and you know leaves behind it just dust and rubble but then that brings us to your turn and so the place is still shaken, so it looks to you like more of it is going to collapse. Okay. And uh, I'm guessing that that was about the area where I heard the the chanting come from before? Yeah. And that it's now completely blocked off, like I can't see right. the door or anything else over yeah. there? Yeah. Yeah, you can't see anything All but right. dirt and rocks. Let's see, what have I got up my sleeve? Um, basically nothing. Um, so yeah, I'll turn around, seeing that there's no other way to get out the way we came in, and I'll start firing at this wall of ice, see if I can do enough damage to break a piece through. Well, it doesn't go to the ceiling. Yeah, I couldn't make it that high. How high is it, though? 15 15 feet. But you can fly. Feet. Yeah, I think I still have some fly time left on my my armor. So yeah, I'll pop that fly and jump to the other side, basically. Or fly up to the top and then hop down, letting the feather fall slow me before I hit the ground. Okay. And shout at them that the ceiling's collapsing. We have to get moving. All right. Casimir, you wake up back in that room. With the table. Okay. And um, you're, you're laying on the table, and you wake up, and you can see the very faint shade of Tarstellus. And, um, and he says, um, the others will need to be woken as well, but you know where to find me. And then, and then he's well and truly gone. At the same time, there's like a a dull flash from each of the other deities around the table. And then their forms um, coalesced into basically just a little uh, bright wisp that then fires off in all different directions, like through the walls and and out of the room. Um, So you do get like a, a brief flash of like looking at, the world from up high and seeing where these flashes end, but it's, it's very, very brief. And, um, and then you find yourself here on this table and the whole complex is shaking, like shaking itself apart. All right. Um, yeah, I'll hop up and, uh, start looking for an exit, I guess. All right. So this particular room only had the one way in it. And that was through that mirror that you can see. Okay. Is it still in existence? 
Yeah. All right, I'll uh, run over to the mirror and see if I can go through. Okay. Yeah, so you run over to that, and um, yeah, you still you get that same sensation as you are pulled through it. Um, and then you find yourself back on the other side. Do you still have that map? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Uh, Here, I'll... I got it. Okay. Anyway, so that's your turn. Fenrith, the whole place is shaking. You've already seen uh, some of the ceilings start to fall. And now Rohan has hopped over that wall, and he's like, we got to get out of here. The place is falling apart. All right. So, yeah, I'll uh, start moving then. Okay. Let's head out that way. All right. Uh, Graham, that provokes an attack of opportunity. Hey, quick question on that is, uh, I know that like with, uh, most command spells, you get, they get an opportunity to try and make their save again every round. Does this one have the same thing? No. Nope. You're going to be in trouble. All right. Sunder. Yeah. So you're trying to grapple him. Is the, that would provoke from me as well? Yeah, if he doesn't, yeah, because he doesn't have improved grapple. Or All do right. you? All right, I will take that. As, uh, does this count as an attack action? Yes. No, it's not an action, okay. like, like you're thinking. So what are you doing as your attack of opportunity, John? Just uh, slash my sword back at him if he's trying to, just like I did last time. All right. So he slices you for some damage, Graham. And that... And that just no, I'm cements... I'm sure what's gotten into you, but was, you really need to stop this. Yeah. And in that uh, set there, I'm, would I be able to switch the action that I, I'm taking at that point? I don't understand the question. Well, I, and if I was going to leave and he tries to, to tackle me and I uh, end up attacking him, as I, I don't think I would just continue moving at that point, okay. as I would choose a different uh, plan of action at that point. Well, you already provoked the attack. So you moved. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I would still have, uh, I guess. Yeah, I'm, I know I what you're saying. Do the, the full 40 feet. Yeah. I move, do one move action instead. Yeah. That way I can. No. Uh, okay. No, you would just do what you were planning on doing. I mean, the only thing that would change it is if he had been successful and actually stopped you from moving. But Graham, that just cements in your mind, you know, he's trying to get away, and he's not. But also, your dagger clatters to the ground because suddenly your hands change back into hands. And so now it feels all weird having all these fingers, but... <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what's going on other than that you two are acting strange. So I'm just going to kind of be in shock that this exchange is happening. Yeah, look on the main tab of your character sheet. Look on the main tab and then at the top underneath your name, there's a whole row of different things. Is it the CMD? Yeah. Uh, 28. So what were you... What was this called again? Okay. Can I deactivate my haste boots? <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> okay, yeah. Let's see. Because I've got four rounds left at this point. Yeah, it's a free action. Um, and you want to deactivate yours? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And that's it for Graham's turn. And then Rohan. The yes. um, make a reflex save. Mm, that's about as good as I can do. Okay. So, um, the ceiling 
and the floor in this area around you collapse. Could I make the uh, reflex that I turn on my fly to escape it? And so, Graham and Fenrith, you see rubble collapse as well, right up to right behind you, Graham. And uh, so, yeah, uh, Rohan, you can do that. Um, You know, basically, with your reflex save, like the ground collapses, but then so does the ceiling. And so you've got to use this fly to move to wherever is safe without getting hit by all this rubble. And you're able to do that. But when it all stops and there's nowhere else to go, um, you know, you find yourself in a, in a dark pocket surrounded by rubble. Okay. But you manage not to take any damage from it. All right. Let's see what have I got that I can use. All right, so it's my turn. Yeah, your turn. So I'll cast uh, dark vision on myself this round. Okay. Let's see. Clear targets. Myself. Dark vision. Okay. Um. So when you cast this, you know you get that familiar effect where you can you know, see in grayscale the world around you, and you find that you have managed to land in a pocket where all of the rubble above you is being held up by itself and um, you're on on dirt uh, but you've got a space of maybe five five feet okay and otherwise you're you're trapped at this point all right so that will say was just to see if I start to panic from my claustrophobia oh, yeah. the so, yeah, I'm I'm holding it together right now, but kind of barely. Okay. All right. Casimir, you step into this room, and the whole place is violently shaking. Mm-hmm. So one of these pillars has already fallen over, um, but here you are. All right. So um, I... Uh, I forget if I did any theory crafting or had Casimir do theory crafting on what this place was because um, if it's like a pocket dimension, I don't think I could teleport out of it, which is part of the reason I haven't done so yet. So do you want that? Like some sort of arc knowledge arcana or something to theorize if teleporting out of this place is viable or if I'm going to have to run for it? Um, yeah, do your arcana. All right. And I don't know that the uh, others are here, right? Um, I don't believe so. No, you don't know. Yeah, you don't okay. know. Okay. So, yeah, you, um, with that role, um, you're pretty confident that, you know, this place being a, um, a, a, maybe if not a dwelling place, certainly a meeting place for deities, uh, it doesn't seem likely to you that, um, just normal people are going to have success teleporting into and out of it. All right. That's what I was worried about. What is that? Is that a standard action or a action for? Yeah. Or is just, it full round? No, that wouldn't take a full round. It'd be All just right. a standard. So then I'll move 40 feet that way. And okay. then we'll start running on the next round. Time to get out of here. <laughs> yeah. So you, you move down this way. You do see that, um, the uh let me fix it here that path that you could have taken to the south that was purported to be the easier path mm-hmm. uh has been blocked by the ceiling collapsing all right uh, but that's you now fenrith you uh have lost sight of that whole room which means rohan you've lost sight of Graham's still chasing you, and the ceiling is, or and the whole place is still shaking wildly. So, what do you do? Uh, I am going to put Graham down. It's all right, Graham. Just close your eyes. <laughs> Shh, go to sleep, Graham. As go to uh, sleep. that way, I can try and dig uh, Rohan out. That's the plan, at least. So we'll do attack against Graham with the. Uh, yeah, we'll do the uh, single attack. 
with that uh, greater vital strike subdued. Okay, that's a hit. Roll your damage. Sorry, it uh, didn't roll like it uh, supposed to last time. <laughs> How knocked out are you? Uh, that's suppressing the fire and then the um, plus six from my strength, too. All right, so yeah, you swipe at um, Graham, like with the flat of your blade, say, and um, smack him a good one on the head. And then Graham, uh, you can feel that impact, and you, uh, you know, you see stars, and you're starting to fade out. But then there, um, you feel this odd um, vibration wherever you keep that um, onyx wand. Uh-oh. Somewhere in there, right? Okay. That actually is even better. So, um, you know, before you lose consciousness, that wand starts dancing wildly on the floor, even even more than it would from just the rumbling. And then it um, shoots towards you with, you know, the speed of light, basically, and uh, slams into you. And then Fenrith, what you see is that where Graham was, now there's just a uh, bright ball of white light, so bright that it hurts to look at. (laughs) And then that ball shoots off through the ceiling um, and is gone. Yeah. Graham blasting off again. Find him too. Jeez. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Um, with my, my, the, what's left of my turn though, I'll start moving into that rubble and, uh, to start trying to shift it around and find Rohan. Um, you know, let, uh, let me do a check for you here. Okay. That, uh, you know that your the ground you're on and the ceiling above you is going to collapse any second. So I'll let you... Just leave him. Okay, so you're going to go start digging at the rubble? Yep, because I can't leave him. Okay. All right, so that's your turn. Um, And let's see what happens here. I may have to put one of my friends down, but I'm not going to leave the other to die (laughs) trapped under rubble. Okay. Um, So Fenrith, the floor and the ceiling collapse, and... Roll a reflex save for me. I'm not reflexing my way out of anything, so... Hey, that's my base reflex save. Yay! (laughs) Okay. Yeah, so the ground gives way beneath you and you start to fall. The ceiling above you also starts to fall. And um, so down you go, uh, clanking and scraping and slamming into... Um, rocks and stone and outcroppings as as basically some kind of a you know sinkhole opens and you fall through and whatever forces are arrayed here that are shaking the earth apart they're they're not doing so uniformly so at certain points you're not falling so much as you're sliding in a lateral direction um, but all the while uh, completely unable to stop or get your bearings and being you know banged and buffeted by the earth and um, I'll uh, get that damage rolled up and see what happens but then it's your turn let's see Graham is out Rohan your turn all right so do I see any kind of place where I might be able to wiggle my way through either a gap in the rubble or anything like that in any direction. Let's see. Um, do a perception. Okay. Uh, that was weird. It took a while for my skills to load. Okay. Sorry, I should have rolled that in the tower. Well, it's okay. Uh, so, no, I mean, you're stuck in this pocket, um, and the ground is still shaking, and so you know that it's it's not certain that that pocket is going to remain. Um, but looking all around you, all you can see is just the, the stone 
created by this rubble and then the earth and ground beneath you. All right. Um, I'm going to do something probably a little bit crazy. I am going to try and find a place where it looks more like smaller bits of, of rubble, like gravel or, or dirt. And I'm going to fire off a gust of wind spell at it. Okay. Um, so it's 50 miles an hour wind um, originating from me. Um, yeah, it's small things get blown away. Uh, Let's try it. Let's see. Tiny or smaller flying creatures must make a DC 25 fly skill or be blown, blown back. Smaller creatures must make a DC 20 fly or get moved. Tiny creatures on the ground get knocked down and rolled. Uh, okay. So, yeah, so it's 50 miles an hour. All right, so when you're in this pocket there, you've got, like, the earth below you, the dirt, and then above you, obviously, is all the rubble that had been falling, and, you know, to the side of you is also, you know, some of the rubble, and that's the area you choose where you send out this gust of wind, and... Um, it does it does knock some loose and create an opening. Okay. So so this wind bursts forth from your hand and then it's reflected back at you and it blows out your eardrums, but it does knock yeah. some of this stuff loose and create an opening um to the side of you. But uh you'd have to squeeze through. Alright. Let's but, do yeah. my will save and see if I can muster up the guts to do it. Yeah, I'd say that's enough for me to try to start squeezing my way through. Okay. And, it, you know, you don't know how how far that goes. Yeah. So. Yeah. But, yeah, that's my only real option right now, so that's what I'll try. But, yeah, the entire time I'll be kind of taking slow, steady breaths on purpose to try and keep myself calm as I'm trapped in my own tomb. And that will be my turn. Okay. All right. So, Casimir, your turn. All right. Uh, so, uh, first things first, I'm going to uh, apparently see a bunch of D6s come my way and really worry. Um, I'm going to swift action and then ca to negate uh, my spell failure, and then I'm going to cast haste on myself. Okay. And, let's see, don't know if I can. I think I'm targeting myself. Uh, all right. And then I will move uh, 70 feet that way. And that's the end of my turn. Okay. All right. And then so what um, What was it you cast on yourself again? Haste. Haste. That's right. And uh, let's get that on there. I believe it's uh, 30 feet extra. I forget mm -hmm. these days. All right, and it lasts for what fourteen rounds? Uh, it's a minute per or a round per level? Yeah, so it would be ten for me. Okay, so we'll put that on you for ten rounds, and you move down this direction and give me uh, perception. There you go. Okay. So you can see up ahead of you the ceiling is collapsed and blocked that way off. Um, so you've got the door, and, and that's the only directions you can see to go in here. The whole place is shaking. It's almost to the point now where you're, like, being bounced off your feet up into the air. All right. Shaking so bad. That's so, like, uh, movement penalties from point this point on? or No, not quite yet. You can still. Not yet. All right. Okay. And then Fenrith. Uh, so in all this process, you eventually do take enough damage that you lose consciousness. And um, when you finally wake up, you find yourself, well, you're not big anymore. Uh, so when you finally wake up, you find yourself, you know, sp splayed out on, uh, you know, broken stone. And uh, that's where you are. You're not you're not sure how deep or how far from where you were you've ended up. Unpack my uh utility shovel. <laughs> Time to dig your way out of this hole. Yep. 
not sure which way is up or down, but I'm right. going this way. All right, so Fenrith, what kind of vision do you have? Elven vision. All right, Just low light. Normal. All right, yeah. so, so you're in complete and total darkness. You can't see anything. Um, I cast light on myself or use my armor, either one. Okay. Because I have light prepared as one of my, what are they, the zero level? Cantrips. Yeah, cantrip. Okay. So you cast that and you find yourself in a space that would be just big enough for you when you are under the effects of, you know, divine power where you're large. But now you're not large, so there's a little bit of extra room. Um, but it's like you're just laying on jagged rocks with a ceiling of jagged rocks within arm's reach. And that's where you find yourself. All right. Well, I, yeah, I'll cast light, look around, and plan out my next move. Okay. All right. So, Graham, you know, you have the the memory of Fenrith smacking you in the head with uh, the flat of his blade. Um, and you you know that you had been trying to get his breastplate, but as you... Um, as you start to regain consciousness, you can't understand for the life of you why you might have been trying to get his breastplate <laughs> from him. And, you know, you're not actually, you don't actually even remember where this happened and what you were doing there. You just remember that the place had started to collapse and then Fenrith had smacked you with the flat of his blade. Maybe it was an accident. You're not sure. But you're slowly starting to regain consciousness. And um, you, as you do, you get this uh, very c calming feeling, almost like you're being rocked. And uh, you don't feel any uh, wounds. You know that uh, he had hit you in the head with the flat of his blade. But your head doesn't hurt. And... Uh, so slowly you start to open your eyes and you, you can feel this gentle rocking motion and you realize that you are uh, lying on your back floating in the water. Hmm. And that's where you come to. Yeah, I look around, scan the horizon. Am I like underground, in an underground pool or something? So as you start looking around, you become aware you've got the onyx wand clenched tightly in your fist. Um, but yeah, you start looking around and no, you're not, I mean, you can see the sky. It's a clear blue sky and you start looking around and you, you can't see anything but water. Okay. And it's salt water, uh, which tells you you're in an ocean somewhere, but, um, looking around, you can't see land anywhere. Hmm. Well, I guess I could try to figure out the cardinal directions. What do we still use survival skill for that? Yeah. Yeah. Just try to get my bearing that way. So I'm like on a plank or something is no, what no. I woke up on. No, you're or just, just floating. Yeah, floating in the water. Well, the first thing I'll do then is, is cast the water walk so I can stand on the surface. And uh, I suppose in my next standard action, I'll roll out a survival skill. But yeah, for now, I'll just cast the water walk and stand up and scan the horizon. Okay. And that'll be it. All right. So you cast that and you stand up and uh, all your muscles feel great. You feel, you know, well rested and in good health. And uh, you're not sure how that tracks with what you remember of being hit by Fenrith. But as you stand up, that's how quickly the memories start to come back. And then you then you remember where you were and what had happened, and there had been a collapse, and then you'd been hit in the head, and the last thing you remember was that that onyx wand had shot at you at, you know, incredible speeds. Right. And, and then you woke up here. So now you're standing up and you're looking, um, but you don't see, even standing up, you don't see any land. Okay. But you're kind of, you, you know, you're an ocean type of guy from an ocean type of place, so... You know, that lets you know that you are at least, you know, X miles away from land, wherever it might be. Right. Because um, your people have discovered that the, the planet is round. 
<laughs> I don't believe it. All right, so that's you. And then, um, what's all this rolling? Somebody's, uh... Oh, that's my bad. Somebody's taking damage. Oh, because Fenrith is dying. Don't die, Fenrith. No, it was... I didn't do the math properly. Anyway, um... Rohan. So... I will... You're going to squeeze through this wormhole? Yeah. That's my... That hope. All right. So the way we're going to do this is (laughs) with... Uh... Well, it's up to you. You could use Escape Artist. I think that would be fitting for moving through these tight quarters. Okay. Um, in order to move, if you want to go faster than, you know, which quarter speed, then we'd say you could do that if you if you used Escape Artist, um, uh, or I don't know, unless you've got a different skill you're thinking of. Um. The only other one I could think of is I've got knowledge to engineering. I don't think that would really apply, but that's the only other one I could think of. Yeah, no, I don't think that would do for this. So let's do this. Let's say... What is it? I've got a couple ranks in Escape Artist, so I, I can give that a shot. Yeah. But I'm I'm less worried about you know making good time as I am just not getting stuck. <laughs> okay. See how quickly Rohan removes a limb if he believes he's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> I I still have one gust of wind spell. It might just blow me like a bullet out of this tunnel if I mm. <laughs> fire it off. But <sighs> yeah, he's not the most rational right now. <laughs> Fenris, you did hit me with that good touch, turned me into a ball of energy, and got all my life back. <laughs> sent me out to the sea where I belong <laughs> alright so I toss that you, escape so, artist in do you okay. swim furiously back to try and get my breastplate <laughs> <laughs> no I th- the way you described it it sounded like some of it was a little it's a little hazy like I remember wanting it but not why and I don't have like a clear image of the events I did bring up an interesting thought in my mind, is if you're a court and say, water deep, how culpable is someone underneath mind-affecting spells if they do illegal things? I wonder how the courts sort that out. Mm-hmm. I figure I'd go back to the caster. Right, as the primary responsibility. Yeah, because, yeah, I mean, if you fail that, like, you don't have a choice, so... Right. Maybe, like, if you were, like, bringing up, like, legal charges, you'd you know, coercion and uh, kidnapping probably because technically you're not uh, doing anything of your free will. You're not able to, or volition as well. So, yeah. You'd follow the, the Harry Potter rules from the uh, the imperious charm. No. What were what those? Oh, I don't know exactly how they, they sorted out who was lying and who wasn't. So I don't know if there really was a way. Or if they just had to kind of go on faith. Uh, we would have a way to tell if he was lying or not if we were a court with uh, just uh, one of the truth spells. But uh, I think his thing is, like, can he be held liable for doing it yeah. since he there's wasn't also, in control of his actions? Yeah, and there's also even the possibility that, like, uh, to discern lies from truth type of thing wouldn't work on like that type of spell because he would fully believe that he needed the potentially right he may fully believe that he needed the breastplate so he would so you know, guilty <laughs> yeah basically <laughs> sorry graham <laughs> i swear Sentence you to a thousand years of pinchers okay so uh yeah rohan you start uh squeezing your way through this um hole that you've created with your gust of wind and so you're going to be moving very, very slowly, and um, you really, um, you really do have to squeeze through. Mm-hmm. So okay, uh, you're doing a lot of scraping, and you know, as you move through there, so it's very uncomfortable. But you do, you know, you are able to move, and um, <clears throat> probably about. And I'm still moving speed. forward, so yeah. 
as long as I can keep moving forward, I'm not panicking quite yet. Mm -hmm. So still holding it together. Okay. But yeah, I'll spend that round squeezing my way through a tunnel that's very claustrophobic. Yeah. Okay. Casimir. Yes, sir. Your turn. Um, so, uh, you're looking around and there's only that door, but right as, um, you start looking in that direction, that all collapses. Mm. Um, let me, uh, yeah, so that, that, that area collapses too, just like the other one. No. So now you're in this room, there's high ceilings in this particular room, about 30 feet. Place is still shaking. Um, but, uh, do a perception roll for me. There you go. Okay. So, uh, you know, the whole place is shaking, rattling. Um, and that's when you rec, when you realize that this massive obsidian block upon which that large golden ball had rested, um, mm -hmm. the way that the ground is shaking, it bouncing that thing around and shows that it's not attached securely to the floor. All you right. do think you do think that you saw a uh, a space underneath it when it was bouncing up and down. All right. I'll move over to it and give it a push or try to anyway. Really wish I had uh what was it that makes Fenrith big? Divine power. That'd help out. All right, yeah. So you move over to this and you put your hands to it and you start pushing. Um so do a strength. There you go. Oh, what was that? Sorry, I bumped Somebody, my mic. Yeah, I was going to say, someone <laughs> must have hit their microphone. Yeah, it was kind of ominous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good sound effects, though. <laughs> um, All right, yeah, so you go pushing on it, but it's just way too heavy. So, I mean, with the ground shaking, it's like vibrating it around, and little by little you can see at the edge that there is a space under there. But um, you're not going to be able to move it just by pushing it. Mm. All right. And then Fenrith. Yeah, so what would you like to do, Fenrith? I will use uh, channel energy on myself. Um, are you, well, to heal yourself? Yeah. So go down to 122 wounds. Okay. Yeah, so you channel the uh, divine energy into yourself, and you can feel your wounds healing as you do that. Um, and that'd be about it for your turn. Yep. Graham. Okay, I'll try to figure out where the directions are. That survival check. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Elements, Rohan, you didn't train me enough. <laughs> no, no, you... You're absolutely positive. You know exactly which way is north, <laughs> south, east, and west. <laughs> okay, so I know that much, but I have no landmarks to travel towards. I don't know if I'm which direction I am from my island. So I'll go west. Start walking in that direction, or running, I suppose, as long as the terrain allows for it. There's not too much chop. Okay. Or westward. Or wait, no, I falsely believe, so due west. All right, so you're heading, okay. <laughs> All right, so yeah, you uh, start jogging off in that direction. And then, Rohan, you're going to continue wiggling through? Yep, Need another check? Nope. Um, okay. No, no, you continue wiggling through um, in this particular section is um, straight enough that we don't need a check. All right. So yeah, I'll keep fighting my way forward. All right. Now, um, let's see. We got about 20 minutes left. So let me... Let's try this. Okay, Kaz, uh, Casimir, your turn now. So, um, Casimir, you have got this giant obsidian block here that you're trying to move um but you're not able to move it by strength alone I did, but i will remind you you know uh you do have your signet ring has multiple stone related abilities on it 
that might work in this case. Hmm. Like, I think you have pass wall. I think you have stone shape. Yeah. Um, so it. there's some things on there that you might be able to use. I'm, I'm not sure. All right. Let's see what we got here then. Uh, pass it. Pass turn the rules. Yeah, it looks like pass wall might work. I could create a passage uh, 20 feet, um, but it's specifying walls. So I don't know if you consider a floor that uh yeah i would uh yeah i would right. i mean i'd say it'll let you pass through you know any wooden plaster or stone obstruction to the limits of its ability this All just right. s stipulates not through metal or other hard harder materials yeah so i could do it like right at the edge on that floor Diagonal, mm -hmm. kind of down into the tunnel or passage beneath it. Yeah, I'll get, I'll give that a try. Uh, let me mark that off. Yeah, I mean that would definitely create a big enough opening, and and as that as it does, you become aware that it's a staircase. Okay. So, um, whatever method normally would be used to move this, you're not sure, but with this spell. That you can use what once a week or once every two weeks or something. Yeah, twice a week. Yeah, twice a week. Um, yeah, you're able to get through the um, that obsidian block, and then you find a staircase under it leading downward. Yeah, I'll uh, hop down, and uh, I don't know. Would that be just one movement right there, or would that would I still continue with uh, my the remainder of my seventy? I don't know how that work. Yeah, so the, a move action. Okay, yeah. So I'll move action into the stairwell and start going. <laughs> okay. All right, so um, you move down that stairwell, and it's like the the walls and the ceiling of it are perfectly sized for uh, a creature maybe twice as wide as you and a couple feet taller. Um so then, so basically, you're just looking down this really long tunnel going at a downward angle down these steps. And so you can move down that direction and not a moment too soon because that's when you hear the uh, collapse above you. Um, and you, you know, whatever light was streaming through from your spell is obscured by the collapsing rubble. And then Fenrith. You had healed yourself. What would you like to do now? As I will, uh, hmm, I will cast Word of Recall. It uh, teleports me back to my sanctuary, which is my bedroom in the hero home. Okay. All right. Let me look at this for a second. Okay. So, yeah, you cast that spell. Let's see what happens. Okay. Roll a percentile for me. We got 68. All right, so you cast this spell, and you can feel it take effect. Um, and then you feel yourself whisked away through the ether um, towards your sanctuary. And that is... Where was it? The home of the heroes? Like your room or something? Yeah, the, my room in the home of the heroes. Okay. All right, so you do feel there's something odd about this spell as it goes off. Like there's some resistance to it that um, that you're not that you wouldn't expect normally. Um, but uh, whatever that was, uh, you're not certain. But then you find yourself in your room at the home of the heroes. Okay, uh, Graham. So you're uh, rushing off in a western direction. Not not seeing any land, but uh, but you are headed in that direct in a direction that you think is west. And I will remind yeah. you that um, you know your signet ring does have a use that you haven't used yet. Oh, um, does it? Well, in your case, it has control water, which could be used to raise you up high enough to see better. Potential. Oh, gotcha. potentially. I could make like a, a water tower. Yeah. Good idea. I didn't even think about that. I forgot about it. In fact, um, yeah, I'll, I guess I will uh, try 
that. What? How high can I make it? It's like a water in a volume of 10 feet per level by 2 feet per level. Yeah, so I could go pretty high. Yeah. If we're using the rings uh, with the level of the ring or whatever as the base caster. Or do you want to use the level 6? It's a no. wizard spell level 6. No. It'd be... Yeah, so I could go like 100 feet or 1,300 or sorry, 130 feet high. And I think two feet's enough for me to, or, you know, like a four foot pedestal of water, post of water. Yeah. I'll have it shoot up there and I'll, I'll take a look around. I was also thinking as I'm traveling, if I would be afforded another survival check when the sun behaves in a way I didn't expect to based off of my um, yeah. initial reaction. That far out at sea, who can tell what the sun will do? <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe it does do this out here. Yeah, so that gets you up pretty high. Right. Yeah, 130 feet, I believe. Let me take a look at that signet ring. Or 150 feet would be the base caster level to make that ring. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that, that puts you up way more than high enough to then get a sense of where you are. And you were, you know, running west actually was... Um, north and real west is the direction that you'd need to go to reach land you can see land to the okay you know, to your left as it is with you facing Just a smidge north. yeah well I'll, um bump the water back down to normal and start jogging off that way okay and my water walks i think each i have unlimited use of it i just have to recast it every uh Almost three hours. I'll have to yeah. Cast it. Okay. Two and a half hours. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, because it's unlimited use, I don't, won't worry about it unless something's happening when you would need to recast it. Pretty sure it's unlimited use. Let me double check. <laughs> it is. I was looking at it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then back to Casimir. Or, I mean, Rohan. Okay. All right. So you continue squeezing along through here. Um, and at this point on this turn, um, you are squeezing along, but you feel the ground or the earth begin to shake again. Okay. So some dust falls and it gets in your nose and you're just waiting to see if this is the end. All right. But, um, then it calms down a bit and, uh, you're able to finish your movement, but then, but you do hear, uh, the sound of collapsing rubble behind you at that point okay um i'll roll an escape artist check to see if i can speed up a little bit okay oh sorry i went to grab it and instead rolled it that's all right that's that's good enough for you to move faster this time okay yeah i'll be pushing myself all right so at the end of your movement you reach a point where the tunnel that you're squeezing through goes mm -hmm. sh sharply down okay and yeah, uh, about an arm's length down is water okay so that's where your turn ends and then casimir you're walking down these steps and um you move what 70 feet on a double move or I move what do you 70 move feet on a single move so 140 on a double with haste? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Am I muted? Oh, sorry. See. I was muted. Um, I move uh, 70 on a single, 140 okay. on a double. All right. So um, you come to the bottom of this uh, staircase and reach a, a landing that's like 10 feet long. And then in front of you is a um, like a 30 foot tall door. Mm-hmm. And it's made out of some silvery metal. And, you know, it's got just the most beautiful scroll work on it. Um, and it's a, it's a double door, but only takes up a single door space. So, like, each okay. side is narrower than it ought to be. Um, so that's where your turn ends. And you can look at this door and you can see, um, like, the handle where you would open it. Mm-hmm. 
But uh, so you're standing in front of that door and then Fenrith, what do you do now? You've made it back to the home of the heroes. Um, so all the lights are out. You're in your dark room uh, and it's um, or sorry, your room's not dark. There is light coming in through the window. But what would you like to do? I'm going to continue to heal myself a bit. OK, So another channel energy. And then I'll uh, I will head out of the room, though. Let's go. Try to go downstairs or start to go downstairs. All right. Uh, Graham, you're continuing to run towards land. And uh, let's see. You you do notice as you're uh, running on the surface of the water, you see some shadows beneath you hmm. moving, um, moving along with you, underneath you. Can I make them out? Uh, do a perception. Uh, yeah, you can easily tell what these are. Um, and you see five of them for certain. And these are uh, orcas. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I don't know, better not get any ideas. I, I Actually, a thought occurred to me. I, uh, when my hand, my claws turned back to hands, I dropped blood tooth. But I was wondering if the returning went off uh, sometime in between when I dropped him and uh, got beamed out of the, out of the the dungeon we were in. Yeah, I mean, he, okay. you had blood tooth when you woke up on the water. Okay. Um, well, I'll just keep an eye on him for now and see if it looks like they're starting to hunt me at any point. Okay. <laughs> but otherwise, keep moving. All right, so what is your overland movement rate? Is that on my character sheet? No, you just are expected to know. Uh, all uh, right, so eight hours of travel at a hustle. Well, no, at a walk. What are we doing one day? Yeah. For the walk would be 24 miles for my speed. Okay. Or three miles an hour, six if I hustle. What if they did, you remember the story, the long walk? But they did it with dwarves only. They couldn't meet the three mile minimum. Just at walking, they'd have to be hustling all the time. They'd burn out a lot quicker. But they have higher constitution. So maybe it'd be a wash in the end. <laughs> Nobody's at all interested in the dwarven long walk dystopian future. Uh, no. I'd watch it. Mm. <laughs> I think the dwarves would just kill everyone and take over. <laughs> Depends on the type of dwarf, though, yeah. or where the dwarf came from. Yeah, but we all know it's dwarves running it. Yeah. They already Something took over. That's why that... you're on a long walk. <laughs> yeah, that, that seems a lot more plausible. He was like the major or whatever that character's name. They're all just standing around with mirror shades, and mm -hmm. I guess... I could. I suppose I could see them doing a long walk as like a an ego competition. Like one dwarf saying, ah, you're a pansy. I bet you can't walk for five miles. It's a pub crawl. <laughs> yeah. You just Every three walk. miles, they get a, another pint of dwarven spirits. Okay, so they Graham, also... oh. when you, you know, you rose up and you could see land, but when you came back, now you can't. So um, it's at least, you think, probably most of a day away at your pace. Okay. Well, since I'm feeling good, I probably will, you know, try to push it if I can. Okay. Using the the hustle. All right. But yeah, those um, orcas, they seem to be keeping pace, but they're not harassing you yet. Okay. All right. And then Rohan. All right. So I'm heading down into the darkness. Um, actually, this round, I'm going to cast Dancing Lights. And send them ahead of me into the water to try and illuminate. See if it opens up down there, or if if it's just a continuation of a tunnel. Okay. So let's yeah. see. Uh, would you be able to cast that spell in these conditions? Um, uh, let's see. Dancing lights. Uh, verbal and somatic. Yeah. And it's a cantrip. Mm-hmm. Okay. Pretty simple. All right. So you cast Dancing Lights and you send it out ahead of you? Yeah. So there are four little glowing spheres, so I'll spread them out slowly. They have to stay within 10 feet of each other. But, yeah, see if 
see if um, the path opens up once it goes underwater or if it's just straight and continuing on in, in the tunnel that I'm going to have to try and squeeze through underwater. Yeah, so by the provided light, you can see that uh, it goes about 10 feet down and then um, and then it moves sharply uh, to the left. Okay. So, yeah, that'll be that turn. Okay. All right. And then, Casimir, you uh, are standing in front of this door. Yes, sir. I'll uh, move up to it and see if I can open it. I think you might be muted again. Dang it. Sorry. I'll move up to it and see if it's uh, if I can open it. All right. Yeah, so you, uh, you move up to this door, and um, you see that it's... Um, it's not locked, and you can just open it with a push. All right. Uh, so, yeah. I, I guess, was it interacting with an object would be my second move? Yeah. So that's where I'll end my turn there. Yeah, so those um, doors swing open, and they reveal a large room on the other side. All right. And let's see. Then Fenrith, you're moving through the house, um, going downstairs, and the only thing that happens for you is that, uh, you know, when you round the corner, uh, Folwin's there with a spear, you know, but when he sees it's you, he relaxes. Did we send the rocks back? No. All right. So, yeah. I'll They're actually after... in the cliffs w- watching where you guys had gone in. Yeah, because I'm just thinking it's going to be a, a long couple days trekking over there. Is, uh, I'm going to... Uh, tell Fulwin uh, that he's awesome for protecting the house, but it's only me, and continue towards the door and uh, hit another channel energy on my way. Okay. All right, so you heal yourself for another 14 points, and um, then I think this is where we'll have to stop for the day. All right. All right. Yeah, thank Pick you. it up yeah, right. here again next time. Hell yeah. Yeah, man. thanks for getting yeah. this turn. Yeah, thank you, Brian. Went very horribly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of did. This has been a Death Watch production. Thank you for listening. Mm-hmm.